YouTube, today we're going to be breaking down and analyzing the most important turns from the European International Championship finals match between Eric Rios and Oliver Eskelin. If you haven't already watched that amazing finals, make sure you open up a new tab right away, pause this video, go watch that finals match, and then when you have finished that incredible match, make sure you check back here and watch the remaining of this video so you can learn more about the crucial moments from that set. But otherwise, if you do enjoy the content, be sure to leave a like down below, leave a comment down below. Let me know if you want to see more kind of this content, but let's get started and get analyzing. Solar Power Gigantamax Charizard is a huge threat to Oliver, which might force a Dynamax from either Landers or Kyurg that could threaten the Charizard with a Max Rockfall from the Landers or potentially a Max Geyser or a Max Lightning from the Kyogre, especially with that Life Orb. Eric tries to bait the Dynamax and switches in Gastrodon for the Charizard slot because it is immune to both Max Move options from the Kyogre and resistant to the Max Rockfall from the Landers. He also switches out the Groudon while it can't do much damage to Oliver's lead, especially with that Intimidate from Landers, and to keep it for the Drought for the Wetter War. Oliver responds by switching Incineroar to eat a potential wildfire in case he is wrong about the Charizard not Dynamaxing and protects the Kyurg because he doesn't want to waste a Dynamax, potentially due to him knowing that Eric does have a good switch option in that Gastron. This lead and turn one is really important as the set progresses. Game one, turn five. The Landorus on Oliver's side is currently at plus one speed, which is able to outspeed and threaten the knockout onto the Charizard with a max move. The Incineroar on Oliver's side is currently drowsy from the yawn Gastron went for in the previous turn. Oliver may fear two options here where Gastron can go for the Ice Beam and knock out the Landers, even if its special attack gets lowered via Parting Shot and a Max Guard from Charizard, or a Protect from the Gastrodon and Max Guard from Charizard would make the Incineroar unable to switch out with Parting Shot and force to fall asleep. Oliver decides to swap the Incineroar out to Reelaboom in order to pressure Gastron, as Oliver believes that Charizard will Max Guard or if Charizard does attack, it will be into the Landers Max Guard slot as Landers is seen as a threat. Eric understands that Oliver has this option and decides to airstream the Reelaboom slot as if you catch the Landers Max Guarding, you are able to get an airstream boost from attacking the other slot, doing heavy damage to whatever the target is, and you can threaten the Landers the next turn. And if Landers does knock out the Charizard, you can at least eliminate the Landers with Ice Beam if Incineroar doesn't click Fake Out. In the worst case, Incineroar does click Fake Out into the Gastrodon, and Landers does take the knockout onto Charizard. The Incineroar falls asleep, and Eric can at least stall out the last turn of Dynamax with Protects, since with Grassy Terrain on the field, Landers cannot do much damage to the remaining Pokemon. Eric is able to catch the Landers, going for the Max Guard, and catches the Reelaboom on the Switch, which does massive damage and faints to the Wildfire that was set up in the previous turn, which means that Oliver is unable to threaten the Gastron anymore with his remaining Pokemon, and will slowly lose to the Gastrodon over time. Game 2, Turn 2. In the first game, Oliver made a lot of defensive switch-ins playing around the Yawn, so Eric believes that Oliver will switch out the Landers into Incineroar, as the Zajin is at plus one since it switched in during turn one, meaning it can threaten the knockout onto the Landers with Behemoth Blade, and Oliver's only switch that wouldn't take much damage is the Incineroar. Oliver decides that the Incineroar switch might be predictable to Eric, and decides to gamble and Dynamax the Landers to double up the Gastrodon with a max Airstream and Ice Beam, which would knock out the Gastron that gave him so much trouble in the first game. Landers and Kyra are able to knock out the Gastrodon with the combination, which means that Eric no longer has any good switch-ins to Water Spout, which will still do a lot of damage to his remaining Pokemon, even in Sun. And now the Kyra outspeeds his entire team, except maybe the Zacian with the Airstream boost. The Landers can now outspeed and threaten the Zacian with a Max Quake, for the knockout while also being able to outspeed the Charizard and fire off a max move before the Charizard can attack. The gamble has paid off massively for Oliver and now Eric has to make a call the next turn to stay in the game as he is very behind and Oliver's Pokemon is threatening a lot of damage and knockouts on all of his remaining Pokemon. Game 2 Turn 3 Eric is very behind here as due to the previous turn he has lost his Gastron and now the Landers and Kyogre on Oliver's side are at plus 1 speed allowing Oliver to pick up knockouts onto both Pokemon even through a Dynamax Eric has. Oliver decides to go for a Max Airstream and Water Spot into the Charizard, as this would allow the Kyra to outspeed this option guaranteed. If it is a fast option, as Oliver is not running a timid Max Speed Invested Kyogre, and a double up would knock out the Charizard, while the second Airstream boost would allow for a healthy Kyogre to finish off the Charizard with Water Spot even in the sun, thanks to the Life Orb and get some good damage into the Zacian. Eric decides to Dynamax his Charizard and go on the offense with an attack from Charizard and a play rough from Zacian into the Kyogre, which is able to take a knockout 
after it has taken two rounds of life for recoil. Eric here might have predicted that the Landis was going for max rockfall into Charizard, which would have changed the weather from sun to sand in order to allow the Kyurg to dish out more damage with a water spout onto Eric's Pokemon. He was probably hoping that the Zacian would be able to outspeed the Kyurg since it wasn't a max speed variant and knock out the Kyurg before it could attack and his Charizard could have survived the max rockfall thanks to the Charty Berry. Unfortunately for him, Oliver is able to knock out the Charizard and weaken the Zacian, trading for the knockout on Kyogre, but with Incineroar and Rillaboom presumably in the back for Oliver, it is almost impossible for Eric to make a comeback here. Game 3, Turn 1. Both Eric and Oliver lead with the same Pokemon that they both have in Game 1 and Game 2. The first turn in both games involved Eric switching out his Charizard into Gastron and his Groudon into Zacian, trying to bait a Dynamax from Oliver's lead while Oliver has tried to play defensively by scouting for what Eric is going to do with a Protect Kyogre and Incineroar switch game 1, and followed by a Protect from both Pokemon in game 2. Eric believes that he has conditioned Oliver to not Dynamax this turn, as he has always switched in Gastrodon, which would make Oliver's max move options a really weak choice, and that he might try to play defensively again. So he finally decides to Dynamax the Charizard and throw off a powerful max Wildfire, allowing him to get strong residual damage while switching out the Groudon into Zacian, but on heavy offensive pressure the following turn. Oliver, however, decides that Eric might finally decide to Dynamax the Charizard because if Eric makes the same play, it'd be predictable and could allow Oliver some very aggressive options like Dynamaxing the Landers turn one and doubling into the switch and allow a Gastrodon knockout like in game two, or potentially getting the Reelaboom in to put on pressure against the Gastrodon switch, giving Oliver momentum. Oliver believes that a max Wildfire might target the Lander slot or could be a max airstream into the Kyogre. Oliver decides to switch the Landers into Incineroar, which takes the least amount of damage out of his Pokemon from the max Wildfire, alongside offer fake out potential for the next turn. Oliver Dynamaxes the Kyogre, allowing it to take the max airstream more comfortably, and with the Life Orb, would be able to knock out the Charizard with max Lightning, playing around a potential Gastrodon switch or the Groudon slot. The results allowed Oliver to be able to eliminate the Dynamax Charizard on turn one, while Eric was able to set up a wildfire to chip away at Oliver's team while getting massive damage to the Incineroar. The trade works in Oliver's favor as Eric has now lost his Charizard, while Oliver's Dynamax Kyurg is a very big threat to his team. On the bright side is that Gastron is still around to prevent any Max Geysers, while Zacian outspeeds Oliver's entire team and threatens a lot of damage, but Eric is still in a very tough position. Game 3, Turn 2. In turn one, Oliver got an amazing position eliminating Eric's Dynamax immediately, and now Kyogre can threaten a lot of damage with Max Hailstorm onto Gastrodon or Groudon, or a Max Lightning powered up by the Electric Terrain into the Zacian. The Incineroar switched in turn one, so it does have the option to go for Fake Out into either of Eric's Pokemon. Oliver decides to go for the Max Hailstorm into the Gastrodon, as he can get guaranteed damage onto the Gastrodon slot, as Zacian could switch into Groudon to stall a Max Lightning, while presumably going for a Flare Blitz into the Zacian slot, a Drought Chop double up onto the Gastron, or a Parting Shot to reposition expecting to protect, or switch from the Zacian into the Groudon. Eric is already down in this game and has to get aggressive in order to make a comeback. Yawn is on option to slow down the game with Electric Terrain from the Max Lightning from turn 1. Cannot allow Oliver to get a Reelaboom switch in, or for Oliver to continuously cycle Intimidate with constant switches, so he double targets the Incineroar with a Behemoth Blade and an Ice Beam, which would knock out the weakened Incineroar, or would be able to knock out the Landers Farian or Reelaboom if Oliver decides to switch, so if no fake out from the Incineroar occurs, Eric has guaranteed a knockout in that slot. Oliver decides not to go for the fake out, and Eric is able to secure the knockout on Incineroar while Gastron took about 50% from the max Hailstorm. This might be dangerous for Oliver because even though he still is in a good spot, he is ignoring the Zacian, which has a lot of potential to sweep him in the late game, and losing the Incineroar is losing one of the ways Oliver can slow down the Zacian. The damage may be nice into the Gastron, but the damage doesn't really matter too much with the real boom in the back that can one-shot the Gastron, alongside with the fact that Gastron can now protect and stall out the Lax Max move from Oliver, while Zacian is still healthy and could make an endgame comeback. Game 3, Turn 4. Eric has stalled out Oliver's remaining turns of Dynamax without taking too much damage. Now his Zacian, even at neutral attack thanks to the Intimidate from Landers prior, can still threaten the knockout onto Oliver's Kyur and still do heavy damage to the real boom. Eric here decides to attack the Reelaboom on Oliver's side with a Behemoth Blade as it doesn't have Protect and attack with Gastron with an Ice Beam into one of the slots which allows him to knock out the Reelaboom if the Reelaboom chooses not to click Fake Out or Grassy Glide into Gastron 
or potentially to catch a lander switch on either slot. He knows he needs to get a Behemoth Blade damage into Reelaboom as Reelaboom threatens the most reliable damage to Eric's remaining Pokemon with Grassy Glide and High Horse Power. With the Kyogre Inhale and Weakened, it would have to rely on Thunder to damage Air Exhaustion and Landris' Earthquake that is weakened by the grassy terrain. If Kyogre protects fearing the target, Eric gets huge damage into Reelaboom and if Kyogre attacks, Eric can hope that Oliver decides to go for Thunder and can go for a 30% miss chance. Oliver has the option to go for Fake Out with Reelaboom, go for immediate damage onto Zasha with high horsepower, or knock out Gastron if it doesn't protect. Oliver has seen Eric play aggressively with the Gastron in the previous games, but doesn't know whether the Zacian is going to protect or which slot it would target if it attacks. Oliver could go for the fake out into the Zacian and try to knock out the Gastron, but is unsure whether it would be able to finish off the Gastrodon. In the last game, the Ice Beam did do 79 hit points into the Gastron, but could be a damage roll and Oliver doesn't know the exact HP stat, so doesn't want to risk missing the knockout into Gastron with Kyogre fearing yawn or potential ice beam damage into Reelaboom. Oliver decides to protect the Kyogre and attack with the Gastron because he knows that he is unable to lose a Pokemon here in the worst case, barring a critical hit. Eric loses the Gastron, but is able to get massive damage onto Reelaboom. And now Zacian could potentially pick up the knockout onto either of Oliver's Pokemon the following turn and is looking scary in this end game. Game three, turn seven. Eric here misses a crucial play rough into the Kyogre, which would have been able to knock out the Kyogre or put Kyogre into life orb recoil range. This allows Oliver to get an ice beam knockout onto the Gastron, which could have damaged the landers, putting it into Behemoth Blade range. The miss here could have either helped Oliver or actually hurt his chances of winning the game. If Eric was able to knock out the Kyogre before it knocked out the Groudon, Eric would have sealed the win here. But if Kyogre survived the play rough, the Kyogre would have knocked out the Groudon with the Ice Beam and had a very high chance of fainting to his own life or recoil. The Grassy Terrain had also ended this turn, which means that Earthquake is now single target and has a very high chance of knocking out the Zacian, especially with the little damage that Zacian has taken as long as Landers survives the Behemoth Blade, which we see later in the game that it does. Now, with the Kyogre alive on the field makes the Earthquake spread damage, which is 75% of the move's original power in doubles, and Oliver is going to have to play multiple mind games with Eric as his Landis is now in an uncomfortable spot. Game 3, turn 10. Here, Oliver goes for a Protect with both Landers and Kyra, which creates an interesting situation for Eric. It is the last turn of rain, so Oliver believes that Eric is going to stall out the rain. The Water Spout no longer knocks out the Zacian, and Thunder having a 30% chance to miss after. Oliver decides to protect both Pokemon here, because if the Zacian does attack the Kyra, he will lose the game as Oliver doesn't want to go for Earthquake alongside attack with his Kyogre, as Zacian from Eric's side has a very high chance of going for the Protect here and would lose his Kyogre to the Earthquake, sealing the game for Eric. He avoids the worst case of losing a Pokemon from a correct target from the Zacian and can go for a mind game during the upcoming turn. Eric did not go for Protect with Zacian and went for the Kyogre, believing that Oliver wouldn't go for a self earthquake with the Protect from Zacian to stall out the rain very likely. He decides to go for a play rough into Kyogre with this in mind, and now with a double Protect, meaning that neither of these Pokemon can go for Protect one and attack with the other to call the slot Eric would target, this gives Eric the option to Protect if he calls a self earthquake from the landers with Kyogre, having to rely on a 33% double Protect the upcoming turn. Game 3, turn 11. Due to both of Oliver's Pokemon protecting from the previous turn, Oliver has lower odds of winning as he might have to rely on a double protect with one of his Pokemon to win the game and calling which slot Eric will target. Alongside Eric having the ability to go for protect, catching a failed double protect or self earthquake option from Oliver. Protect gives Eric the ability to try to catch the self earthquake, a failed double protect alongside earthquake, and doesn't lose him the game outright if Oliver doesn't knock out his own Kyogre. It would allow him to take chances with Oliver's Kyogre on a potential Thunder Miss or target the right slot the following turn. Here, Oliver commits to an aggressive read where he goes for Earthquake and an attack with Kyogre, which makes him lose his Kyogre, and now Eric Zacian can seal up the game. Turn 10 gave Eric a new option to go for Protect with this turn as both Landers and Kyogre protected and forced Oliver into a hard decision this turn, while turn 2 
might have allowed Oliver to be able to weaken the Zacian earlier as Zacian did end up being problematic in this late game. And that is the show. Congrats to both Eric and Oliver for making it to the finals. It was an incredible match to watch on stream and it was really fun to break down the grand moments right here. If you did enjoy this kind of content, let me know in the comments down below and maybe I'll make more of this in the future where I'll maybe analyze future regional streams for the finals match. But yeah, let me know in the comments down below and leave a like down below so I can gauge how interested you are. But that's going to be it for me. Make sure you check out the rest of my series 12 content where i use a lot of cool teams and a lot of fun pokemon but that's gonna be it have a great day people and until we bow again i'll catch y'all later